and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube as well for our second Tuesday Brews Day deck, Esper Alayla, where we build a deck around Alayla, Artful Provocator here. Uh, but before we get into it, I just want to mention that I just started a Patreon. If you're watching this video later on YouTube and you like my content with these different decks every single day and like to show your support, it's $3 a month. Um, so head on over there. There's a link down in the description panel, but it's patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. Put a link here for everybody here in uh, Twitch chat as well. And where I'll be producing written content, sideboard guides, uh, stuff like that, talk of magic over there on Patreon. So we're building a deck. Tuesday, what Tuesday Brews Day is about is where we build decks based around or built around rares and mythics that don't really see very much standard play and want to build decks around them. So this challenge was with, you know, making an Alayla Artful Provocator deck. So Alayla, four mana, two, three, flying death touch lifelink, where your other creatures you control the flying get plus one plus zero. And then whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, you create a one, one fairy token with flying. So, uh, you know, we, we want to cast a lot of artifacts and enchantment spells with Alayla. And so when I was, you know, kind of thinking about what, what can we do to cast a lot of artifacts and enchantment spells, I mean, just brought us to the Demir Affinity Forge deck that we've been playing on the channel and having good success with and, and you know, a deck that I really like. And so I was like, well, we can just turn this into Esper for Alayla. It's a way to play a lot of artifacts. Of course, the, re the way that we do play a lot of artifacts is we have Mystic Forge that allows us to cast the top card of our library if it's an artifact or colorless non-land card, and we have a lot of those. And then they can cost less with Ugin, you know, Ugin can make them free to be able to cast, or we also have Tezzeret that gives our creatures affinity for our creatures and planeswalkers affinity for artifacts to make them cheaper as well. Um, so yeah, we kind of turn this into Esper, and we get some different card choices in here. So it's kind of good to see how this really works out. Um, you know, compared to the Demir deck, one we get glass caskets. So we get a, a good artifact removal spell. That's that's like a, a huge key. Here I'm excited to try out Glass Casket, giving us some removal um, in artifact form here. And then also, I feel like I, you know, I'm going to try Karn the Great Creator. I feel like I probably should have been playing Karn the Great Creator before. I'm going to try Karn the Great Creator. Uh, we have it in here where we get to minus two. Uh, you know, we have a few different artifacts in our sideboard. Not a ton, but we got a couple Sorcerer Spyglass. We have our fourth copy of Mystic Forge. So Karn, so this is basically like playing two extra copies of Mystic Forge. Um, there we got our third Golos, where Golos. I really like Golos. You know, following up Karn. If you have like four mana, you play Karn. Go grab Golos. The next turn, play your fifth land. Play Golos. Ramps you to the six mana cards. These powerful six mana cards. And then we got two good top end cards. We got a Meteor Golem in case we want to destroy stuff, and we also have a Citadel if we're playing against an opponent that's not attacking our life total, and so we want a way to be able to play even more cards for free. Um, Citadel with Mystic Forge could uh, work out <laughs> really well together. Um, so yeah, that's so that's kind of like what we got going on here. I got a couple of Chromatic Lanterns to help fix our mana because our mana, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with the mana. You know, it took a, took a while here. I want to play Field of the Dead and I, I, like, I think Field of the Dead is just, you know, a really strong land to have. And we don't really have too much colored requirements except for the Kaya's Wraths. Um, so Ch Chromatic Lantern can help out with uh, the Kaya's Wraths, but then we also have Golden Egg and Guild Globe that help fix mana as well. But yeah, allow allows me to play a lot of different lands. As you see, I just have like one Hollowed Fountain, one Tranquil Cove, a couple Water Graves, one Dismal Backwater. You know, I want to have a good amount of basics because I don't want to be playing tap lands too often. But the thing about the Demir Affinity deck, even though I have Field of the Dead, I have a lot of islands and a lot of swamps and, and you know, a lot of uh, watery graves and stuff. And so even though we have like seven lands, it's, they're not always all different. But I'm I'm going to hopefully have much a much better chance of having seven different lands and everything and turning on Field of the Dead a lot easier with having a three color mana base that we have here. All right. So let's see how we can do with Alayla. Also only playing 24 lands because the Chromatic Lanterns, um, you know, with, with the help of like the, 
the the two drops that draw cards the chromatic lanterns are kind of like ramp the the gullus is a ramp hopefully we can get away with only playing 24 lands with all the different ways to draw cards all right let's see how this get this goes i feel like this this deck could be pretty good but yeah this is what tuesday brews day is all about um I forgot to mention in the other video. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you have rares and mythics, and of course y'all in chat as well, if you have different rares and mythics that don't see standard play, but you think they could be cool uh, cards to build around, and you want to see decks built around them, let me know, and um, I'll build decks around them for next Tuesday. Um, you know, that's that's what that's what we want to do. We want to show some love to all the cards, even the ones that aren't, you know, like your tier one get played a lot so unfortunately right now all of my lands are coming into play tapped drowned secrets <laughs> to fairy time raveler. Yeah, Cauldron of Eternity, that's a really good one for future. Alright, looks like my Mono Blue Dredge deck. Hey, okay. You wanna come say hi? My opponent has an awesome dredge hand. I've played a lot of played a lot of the opponent's deck there. They have a really good hand. Like when the deck has drowned secrets, it's so much better than when it doesn't. Yeah, and they're hitting really well. You know, hitting a phoenix and and multiple creeping chills. Double phoenix. Yeah, like they're doing, they're doing pretty well. It's just good just to get the um, just good to get the the artifacts into play because of Tezzeret. Yeah, it's gonna be really tough to beat these Phoenixes. We need a, a Layla. We need a Layla getting us. Um, some. Fairy rogues to block. Hit three. Phoenix. All right, well, they, they got us this game. I need, one. I need to be able to play that Golos. I got us that game.
All right, so we don't need the glass caskets. We're going to bring in Ashiok and Ego. We're just going to have like counter magic, a couple planeswalkers. Oh, Stone Coral Serpent's really nice. Why is your ear itching? Keep two Kai's Wraths. I don't think we really need more. Well, I liked the... <clears throat> I think I might have liked the first hand better. But... So, of course, Ashiok would be our best thing to draw. Or Unmored, or Unmored Ego. Be able to name... Of course, we're in a swamp here. Huh. I guess they kept a one-lander with double opt, and they didn't draw another land, and they didn't want to continue to play. No, I don't. I don't think Ashiok gets free Narc Amoebas and Creeping Chills because you have to. You have to continue. To, you have to finish Ashiok's ability before you do the other ones. So you mill over four cards and then exile. So I don't think they get the other stuff. Like those triggers would go on the stack, but you have to. You have to finish Ashiok's. You can't like. Target player puts the top four cards in their graveyard. All right, now you do other thing. Now you do other things. Now let's go back to Ashiok. That's not really how that's not how cards work. So no it Ashok shuts down. Like you you don't have to worry about your opponent getting narcomibas in or anything. So yeah, chill, chill doesn't work. Nakamura doesn't work. All right, so they don't have any counter magic up. I guess I could have just played Interplanar Beacon Nightmare. after drawing that. You I'll return where you slumber. So did not get any did not get any Phoenix. This is why this is why this deck like my opponent's deck 
some people are playing this now and they they're not playing red sources this is why you have to play red sources because you, you need to be able to heart like whenever your, pe your opponents play ashiok and narset which those are very popular planeswalkers you have to be able to hard cast um phoenix and attack those planeswalkers All right, let's give this a try. Double glass casket, golden egg. Um, I'm going to fetch first. Mystic Sanctuary. I like fetching before scrying, kind of in general. <laughs> oh, this is another mill deck. They're everywhere, I tell you. Everywhere. Looks like this one's trying to mill me. Hey, awesome, Rex. Glad to hear that. Oh, nope, they're self-milling also. They just have... Oh, yes, they just have Mystic Sanctuary. I guess I had Mystic Sanctuary in the deck the last time I played it. Alayla! Well, Layla has a cool animation. How crazy is this that we're playing against this, you know, <laughs> Dredge match one and match two? I've been playing Dredge for, you know, months and months and, like, basically never played against it. And now suddenly we play against it twice in a row? This is crazy. Never. Did not expect this. So Alayla, very good against Dark Light Phoenix. You just get to make chump blockers for Phoenix. You know, cast an artifact, make a two one. Or like not even like chump blockers, like cards that trade. I'll draw another card first. You get the cool animation there too. Speaking of cards that are good against Phoenix, a 6-6 six, six Reach Trample. Pretty good. Yeah, the Serpent is nice. This is going to be a 6-6 a six, six that also brings two, or also brings, sorry, brings a 2-1 along with it. Um, I have a Spotify playlist that I use that I'm trying to link right now. There's a Phoenix. There's a Phoenix. Is that their first two? And they'll just get it back. I'm going to block one.
Yeah, they're down to 18 cards. Darn. They are starting to mill me. I do not like them milling me. That's that's the way that my opponent can win this. Is milling me. Ooh. Mystic Forge. I probably shouldn't be milling myself. Well, this is good. How do they have a how are they how do they have twenty life? Haven't we like attacked them a bunch? How do they have twenty life? Ah, uh, creeping chills. Right. All four Phoenix over there. Sad my opponents are milling me. Definitely could mill me out. Not in my main deck, I don't. Yeah, I think I think this is game. Drown Secrets is so good. I'm down to just 11 cards. Another very good hand, and or well, basically perf another perfect hand from our opponent. Game one, we'll see if we get games two and three again. Um, it's kind of all about Drown Secrets. You know, like that's that's the card. That is the card. I mean, I guess Meteor Golem destroys Drowned Secrets, but I already have the Ugins that do that. They have two cards that are going to beat us. Or they, they can't beat us. Drowned Secrets and Arclight Phoenix.
So Ashiok helps shut off the Phoenix part of that. Yeah, my opponent plays Red Land, so they... They were doing that correctly. Seems like it's evolving. I've... We've been playing this dredge deck for, for months and months. We've been playing it with Redlands the whole time. No. Well, that's the worst case scenario there. I just sideboarded in on where he goes. They were in the sideboard. My plan is Golos. My purpose is greater than myself. For next turn, ramp. And then play Hero to Two Secrets. And then play Meteor Golem. One Secrets. No, I mean, I think I think the chance of, like, yeah, we could keep Ashiok above three because of Phoenix, but I think that the, the chances of, of getting rid of Phoenix is, is, is really nice. Like, the ability to. Mm. I will not lose another friend. I think that's just some upside of just instead of just never a activating Ashiok. Because like, if you if you're not exiling, if you're not activating exile, or sorry, if you're not activating Ashiok, you're not exiling their graveyard, anyway. And I think just the ability to get phoenixes and everything with a plus is the way to go. Definitely, definitely possible. I should not have played the Karn, and I should have just played Stone Cold Serpent last turn to protect Ashiok. That could have been a, a mistake, for sure. My opponents had pretty perfect hands. Play dredge a lot. I will return. That's pretty perfect hands there. So I'm going to Meteor Golem, destroy Drown Secrets. And then the next turn, I guess, like, Lantern. I'm, actually, I'll probably the next turn i just cast Golos. They have another Drown Secrets? Yeah, they honestly have just had, ide like, really ideal hands. Hmm. Maybe I just activate Golos? No, we gotta just blow up a drown secrets.
I don't love our chances. But we'll see. That was a good draw. <clears throat> Is it better to play the other golden egg or to sack an egg and gain three life? Are they going to have a third flame sweep? It's it's basically the exact same either way, you know, like either make a blocker or gain 3 life to, you know, basically be a blocker for the phoenix. The the only difference here is if they have a flame sweep, it's better to have the life gain. And so that's why I'm going to do the, the life gain. Yeah, Layla has lifelink, but I don't really want to block with a Layla. Ugh, we have to, though. I was really lucky hitting that fourth, at, fourth Phoenix. Oh, they didn't... Oh. They were not able to cast a said Phoenix, though. And not be able to bring back the Phoenix, I mean. the designs of an elder dragon. Tilt. By your past is unwritten. So I, I can sack this golden egg still to gain three life. They're down to just six cards in their library. So to get the phoenixes back, they're probably having to play like draw card effects. All right, we got this game. This has been a nightmare. I guess I could have killed the Phoenix first. Whatever. <laughs> I guess I could have. Oh well. Secrets manifest before you. 
Yeah. I basically, the reason why I didn't, but I mean, did we just draw a land? I don't know. The reason why I didn't is I, I wanted to make sure that Ashiok didn't get countered by Mystical Dispute, but I still could have just played the Ashiok, not minus, and then play the Othakaya, and then kill Phoenix. So I, I should have just, I just wanted to really get Ashiok in there. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. The Ashok won the game anyway, so it didn't, it didn't really matter whether that Phoenix was in the graveyard or, or, like, whether it was in the graveyard or exiled, they were dead. All right, game three. Hopefully no perfect hand from our opponent. No Drown Secrets, turn two. Please, no Drown Secrets. I guess I should have been asking for a better hand for myself. No, Serpent's pretty important, you know, making a 4-4 Serpent. I think it's more important than having an Othakaya. I, I wasn't sure with Othakaya Chromatic Lantern, though. Could have definitely seen putting back Chromatic Lantern. That, that was one I wasn't exactly sure about the Kyra Lantern. I, I could be talked into either way. <laughs> Definitely got some bright eyes. Yeah, I used to listen to this album all the time. I especially am slow. Darn, no Phoenix. Yeah, this song is so good. No. Drown Secrets. No. Because, you know, I'm, I'm worried about them milling me out with Drown Secrets. Right now. But of course, they can just find Phoenix, put Phoenix in the yard in one turn. Man. I aspire for more. Those are two bad mills. Ugh. Why do they get my good cards? <laughs> Why do we get nothing but lands over there and then they hit my planeswalkers? Boo. Come on, my Tesseract? No. Three Planeswalkers and four cards. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, that is that is cheating in draft. A Yara and Garrick fit together. That is like cheating. Yeah, they could definitely mill me out. I'm at 39 in library, they're at 34. Oh my gosh. Serp two serpents? I'm just taking all my win cons out. I feel like if I if I attack, they're gonna just cast Phoenix because we haven't seen any Phoenixes. So there's they likely have a Phoenix in hand, and they're just gonna cast Phoenix and kill my Ashiok. Yeah, I guess they I guess it's possible they turn they boarded out Phoenix and turned into a mill deck. It's not very likely. I suppose that's possible. This Drowned Secrets card is so good. <laughs> yeah, I was going to start attacking the next turn, but yeah, maybe I should have just attacked that turn. At least it hit two bad cards this time. Okay, yeah, I bet they did. All right, need to, I need to be attacking. Beg for life. It makes your nightmares sweeter. They just keep on hitting, like, they're just hitting my best cards. I'd... I just don't have anything good left. They've milled over. They've exiled everything. They exiled both my Tezzerets. Man, this is rough. Playing God of Shrine is only like the fifth different land, so we're still quite a ways from Field of the Dead. I don't, I don't really see me winning this. I'm sad. Drown secrets too too powerful.
Should still have an Ugin left in the deck. I have one Ugin left. Darn it. Need that to be you again. Wait, I can cast you? All right, yeah, you can cast colorless cards. Right, right, okay. So that's good. Ah, oh, there's my Ugin. I am Karn. Stand down. That's the Ugin I needed to take out this Drown Secrets. Ugh, we gotta wait a turn. Yeah, that's game. I'm I have eleven. The second Drown Secrets is definitely game. They have sixteen. If I would have attacked last turn, they would be at eight, or like that other turn, they would be at eight. But it does not matter. I had one request. My opponent not have drowned secrets. That request did not go answered. Got milled out twice. Game one and game three of drowned secrets. Should have started. Go I could have dealt four extra damage. We were dead at that turn. We could have put our opponent to eight. That's not killing them. And we were we were dead. We had no cards left in life. We we didn't get another turn there. So I could have made one extra attack, but that was not gonna be the difference in the game. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, like this is this is a pretty slow metagame. Milling is a milling your opponent's a pretty good strategy. But Drown Secrets are really underrated. I will say these glass caskets have been pretty poor, but. To be fair, we've played against Mill and then Mill. So we played against decks without targets back to back. But it kind of looks like that way again. This could be. I guess this could be like an. Is a deck with a budget mana base? I am playing a Demir Mill deck tomorrow. This is a donation deck to play. Yay! Yay! Target for Glass Casket. Yeah, I could have could have just played the Golos there, used my mana better. <clears throat> but then if I did that, then they would just have to like, you know, draw an extra card and play a shock to kill my Golos. 
I and I didn't really want that. I enjoy the proper application of knowledge. Well, there's a shock. Hmm. We won't crack Fable Passage. We're just going to let it be a land. That's another cool thing that Chromatic Lantern can do. We can just keep we can just keep that a land so that we get Field of the Dead. Have an extra land. Hopefully we get to untap with Golos, because of course with, with Chromatic Lantern we can activate. Um, with Guild Globe and Golden Egg we could activate anyway. Though also, I mean, with just Guild Globe. I'm glad they discarded Shock last turn. That's a good sign for Golos surviving. This is a bad sign, though. My answers lie in the cold truth. All right, we gotta attack this Royal Scions. Serpent's a good draw. Yeah, so they needed one extra card in their graveyard for the Beacon Bolt, but they could have just ticked up the Royal Scions first and then, you know, like discarded the Radical idea and then Beacon Bolt and didn't need to shock. Stone Coral Serpent does not get Beacon, beacon Bolted. Bacon bolted. Hey, Jokers, it's going good. Going good. We got Tuesday Brews Day. We're playing some sweet brews here with Layla. And also today, I started a Patreon page. If y'all kind of knew or didn't didn't realize that, just started a Patreon page. It's three dollars a month. Um, and. I'm going to be uh, doing written posts over there, sideboard guides, all that kind of stuff. So if you like the stream, like to help show your support, check out Patreon. Cover my back, Rowan! Hmm. Well, thanks, Jokers, yeah. So there we go. So yeah, it's been a good day. I want to have the Stone Coral Serpent take out Royal Scions before Rikaya's Wrath. And so that's, you know, I'm waiting on a Layla also there. You will not block our noble path. No, Kaya's Wrath is is just a global effect that says destroy all creatures. It doesn't target or anything. Stone Coil Serpent can't be targeted or dealt damage by, but it can <clears throat> it can get destroyed by a wrath as well. That was weird. Oh, back to training. Hi. Hunt. 
Until you have lived as a statue, do not fall. True goodness can never be corrupted. <laughs> yeah, I decided to go with Karn instead of Alayla, uh, in case we want Akaya's Wrath again. Um, and also, you know, like the Karn was, you know, basically like drawing a card by playing the Karn. I'm gonna keep the Golos here though. I want to draw that card. We want to find Ugin and Tezzeret, ideally. So, so I guess I don't have. I guess I don't have enough mana to Alayla and Golos. My allies are counting on me. I should have just done that first. I could name this a probable alliance, I guess. Nah. Just destroy that improbable alliance with Meteor Golem. I don't want them to have Royal Scions later on. Probably the safe mood to just cast another Kai's Wrath here. It's probably the safe move, just Kai's Wrath. No, definitely do not want to animate Mystic Forge. I'll animate like one of these golden eggs. I don't want them to be able to, you know, like draw a Beacon Bolt and kill my Mystic Forge or something. You know, they draw Beacon Bolt, kill Golos, Mystic Forge. I don't want that to happen. We should have this one, though. Feel very confident in us winning this game. Four. 
Where's my six mana walkers? There's a six mana walker. Keep that on top. Evil cannot withstand a righteous army. That's what I was hoping to find. Whenever I animated or whenever I activated Golos. I guess I could have Mystic Forge first and just got rid of the Temple of Silence, but I thought, you know, like having a temple isn't so bad anyway. I have 11 artifacts in play right now. So, like, we have Tezzeret Lethal. Next turn, we can play... Hmm... We can still play Glass Casket, Golden Egg. All right, here we go. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just play this for ten for free. Play that for free. So that's eleven and twelve. 12. Zap. You should just concede. That's always satisfying. The zap. Alright, good game there. So the Kaya's Rats were pretty important. Getting rid of Drake's. Let's get another one of those instead of Oath of Kaya, which doesn't look very... Oh, the Kai does not seem too useful with them having four toughness creatures. Um, <laughs> yeah, chat hasn't been talking here in a little bit. That's okay. Um, we could bring in... Uh, I don't think I want Ashiok, even though Ashiok's good against like the the other spells. I don't love these glass caskets. I want to play a couple for like their O fours, but I don't want like a. I don't think we need a ton. I'll, I'm gonna bring in one spy glass for Royal Scions over a glass casket. Yeah, I'm worried about the Drake and like the other O four. So, so yeah, we got four Kai's Wrath. I'll make sure Drake doesn't kill us. Ugh. Okay. That was pretty cool how Chromatic Lantern let us just tap Fable Passage for mana the whole time, and, you know, we didn't have to actually fetch with Fable Passage before. Hey, Frank. Thank you so much. Oh, really? There were no control decks submitted for the MC? The Mythic Championship? I didn't quite notice that. Probable Alliance is going to be really annoying to deal with. So if I play Karn, Karn's going to die. I will not stop. 
Do I want Citadel or Mystic Forge against my opponent? I'm going to grab one of these two cards. I'll take Citadel. Citadel in play. They discarded Negate? That's a bad sign for me. That's a really bad sign for me. Because, of course, I'm definitely relying on this Kaya's Wrath resolving. They're willing to just discard Negate. That is not good. Love it. That's what I was hoping to see. Oh, can I go down to four? That opponent's probably not killing me from four. Curiosity and wonder drive civilization, not petty war. Ether itself serves me. Oh, right. We don't have Mystic Forge. Wait. Ah, uh, so yeah, we don't have Mystic Forge. We can't just play stuff for free. Okay, I did not want to go down to two. That was a mistake. I'm just so used to playing this deck with Mystic Forge where, like, when you have Ugin and play, the stuff zero mana. And so it's free, and, you know, it says zero there. That was definitely a mistake. I did not want to go down to two. That was my bad. Please do not have a shock. That'd be painful. Yay, no shock. Okay. Hmm. Darn. I was hoping they were going to be countering that. I just need to know this hand. Just I need to know if they have a counter spell or not. If they don't have a counter spell, then it gets a Tezzeret. Yay, no counter spell. I should name Improbable Alliance of them having two of them. Do not get 
in my way. Free Golos. Gain a life with a dismal backwater. Gain eight life again. This is just the beginning. I guess this attack is lethal. I think it's possible my opponent doesn't block and doesn't realize this attack's lethal. I just took it. Lethal. <laughs> Dude, we, just, we just did 20, 20 that turn. We did all 20. We did 8 with Tezzeret, 10 with the Citadel, and we did attack for 2. <laughs> GG's. Yeah, 20 damage, 1 turn, only 2 is combat. Ugh. Oh, man. If... If Tez gave artifacts affinity, Tez would probably be pretty broken. Yo, affinity, one turn kill. Yeah, I, I definitely should have. Karn. Karn's been impressive. I should definitely have Karn in my other artifact deck. Karn's been good. Steam Vance. I'll play this first, so I have more information with my temple. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I could have Karn Karn go grab Wishclaw Talisman. That goes and grabs Ashiok, so my opponent can't shuffle, and can't use it, the artifact. So just get to double down. Okay, so you're you're playing so you're playing the affinity list in uh, teamer colors with Oko and Lava Coil, huh? So it looks like this is is it. This looks like is it flash.
Which I guess Serpent dies to Lava Coil as a 4-4. Four four. It's kind of weird that we played against two Dredge decks back-to-back, -back, and now two Is It Spells decks back-to-back. -back. That's kind of weird. Those are not pairings that you necessarily expect. But I'd rather them negate that than negate anything else in my hand. Yeah, it's just been four four X opt every deck. Yeah, their second improbable alliance deck. That is crazy. Two dredge back to back, now two improbable alliance. I want to resolve Ugin while we can, but I don't want them to kill Ugin. And they can kill. If I just play Ugin, they can kill Ugin no matter what I do. Because they can make this three power attacking Dreadhorde Butcher can re. Oh, there's no shock over here. Never mind. Okay, never mind. Actually, yeah, never. And Serpent blocks anyway. So, yeah, never mind. We can tick up. I am ancient and Heed to my advice. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. I will learn what nobody yet knows. Ooh, Karn's perfect. Yay, no counter spell. I have faced worse than the You will not threaten this world. Chandra. Uh Why am I attacking the Rose Ions? I should be attacking them. <clears throat> so anyway, what I, I decided that I'm going to cast the Kaya's Wrath to try to protect Karn. Because then, I don't want them, darn it, <laughs> I didn't want them to be able to do that, I didn't want them to draw a land Chandra, because I, I wanted Karn to be able to be here to be able to minus and go grab my other Spyglass to be able to name Chandra. Okay, well that's fine. Alright, I, I can have one emblem, that's fine. They didn't kill my Karn or anything. I will rid you of your corruption. Or anything scary, like they didn't kill Ugin. All right, time for an awesome turn. Um, we'll just cast you for two.
Oh, Layla. I'm gonna tuck you, Alayla. Ether itself serves me. I don't want that land. Actually, I should have cast you for four the first time. I regret that. So here we go. Or right, actually five. That was a good turn. That was a good turn. Okay, so they're doing uh, more of the same from before. Um, getting rid of Planeswalkers, more important. Did they have Crackling Drake, this opponent? I don't think so, right? Well, I'll still play another Kaiser Wrath, take out a Glass Casket. Ugh. Play another Kaiser Wrath. On Teamer Reclamation. Yeah, I, I feel like Teamer Reclamation is just too bad. Like, there's too many aggro decks that it's just not, it doesn't have good enough defense against all the aggro decks in the format. I don't, I don't like it. I like every time I play against Teamer Reclamation, like with any deck that I play, it seems like a, a pretty easy win. I'm not I'm just not impressed with the deck at all. So I'm just gonna bring in the extra two Kaya's Wraths for um just in cases and get rid of a glass casket and an Othakaya. Played against Drown Secrets, Down, Drown Secrets, Improbable Alliance, Improbable Alliance. These two mana blue enchantments are taking over the metagame. Sure. Is the worst card in my hand. Crackling Drake obviously is a is a real Let problem, and so is Royal Scions. So I'm, I'm keeping the Kai's Wrath. Land. For how my opponent was fidgeting with their cards, it really felt like they had a counter spell over there. And so, um, so I wanted to get it out of their hand, playing Karn there. 
I don't really know how I'm going to deal with this Royal Scions right now, but I, I kind of need this Kai's Wrath to resolve. Looks like my opponent just had a, a good hand. We'll probably give him this game. This Scion's ultimate is going to be tough. I'm taking seven here. There is no taking nine here. Bravery. So it's basically, I, I don't know how I'm surviving this Royal Scions Ultimate. I guess the answer is I'm not. No, I've I have lanterns in the main deck. And then also, you know, like Guild Globe cast or like activates Golos on its own. There's just not really a reason to to cast Kai's Wrath and have my opponent be more Cognizant or more ready for Kai's Wrath. I could play one of the spy glasses in the main. I definitely want to keep a spy glass in the board though. I can play one of those over the glass casket. These glass caskets just aren't aren't necessary. Yeah, Legion's End to take out just 1-1s. One one it's either that or, like, Ashiok for, like, the flashback parts of spells. Or Ego. I'll play one Legion's End. Yeah, there's times that Ashiok or Ego could be useful. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so we're definitely going to be able to play Lantern next turn, which is good. They're keeping. The gate up. I'll take that trade. Layla does not get negated. Just 
does get disdainful stroked. Air Cyborg needs some Mortify. I mean, yeah, if we just keep on playing against... Discard Royal Scions? Huh. That's a surprising discard. To say the least. Of course, I don't know what their hand looks like. Sure, they're certainly trying to leave up two mana for counter magic. I'm hoping to be able to, like, you know, draw something else and be able to double spell, you know, like have something else and Spyglass together. Because I think the Spyglass would have gotten negated if I would have just played it last turn. You know, like, kind of have them play with less mana, make them keep the two mana up, and hopefully draw something to play alongside of Spyglass. But obviously this is a good combination. Hey, good job, Jokers. Way to go. Good job. Okay. There's the negate. I went with the, you know, went the Spyglass first to get the negate out of their hand, since Alayla can make a bunch of creatures. This is bad, though. Mm, a quest this is very bad. Yeah, I could see Golgari Adventures being being more powerful whenever. Like if if field gets banned, um, you know, like the the Simic decks look to be like the the next top thing without Field of the Dead in the picture. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure exactly how Golgari Adventures pairs against Simic decks. Now that's a card right there. Now that's a card right there. <sighs> we can just play Ugin minus, get rid of the Royal Scions that way. Hopefully with the reset with Mystic Forge and with the shuffle with Fable Passage, be able to play some other spells as well. Uh, do they have more counter magic? Well, maybe, maybe not. Really hope they don't have more counter magic. Yay! All right, here we go. And fear are the seeds of disaster. 
Let's go. Mm. No, that's all we could do. All right. Um. Another Yeah. Not super surprised by another one of those. With them discarding a Royal Silence earlier. I could have just killed the Pyromancer. Well, that's the thing. If they... No, like, I could have minused first, and then they couldn't... But then they could respond to a shock, and I wouldn't be able to play other spells. I don't really want to draw this land. I want to draw that land, I guess. You will lose. Is it... Don't you see? You have already lost. I'll draw the temple. Temple's a good land. Yeah, I want to stay out of, you know, I'm ticking up. Stay out of easy burn range. Uh-oh. Hopefully that's all they got. Hopefully they only got the six damage. So obviously we're gonna kill both these pyromancers this next turn. All right, shadows fall. Have a good night. You think that hurt? Hopefully that's all they got there. Oh no, Castle Embereth. Growing for one. Ugh, gross. <laughs> you think you were one? If I play Golos, I don't get to Kaya's Wrath. Gosh, this is a problem. This right here is a problem. This ultimate. If I don't do anything with this card... That hurt. Ah, man, this hurts. I'm likely not going to be able to stop them from ultimating. I, mean, I guess I could get rid of Golos. I enjoy the proper application of knowledge. for something to get rid of this Royal Scions. 
We like to finish each other's attack already. I <clears throat> I couldn't activate Golos that turn. I would be able to untap and activate Golos because of Guild Globe. But you know, when I'm able to deal with Royal Silence that turn. So I mean, one thing I could have done differently here is whenever I played Tezzeret, I ticked up because it's seven loyalty. I thought seven loyalty was going to survive, but I could have minus three'd and, you know, basically sacrificed my Tezzeret to, to grab Spyglass back and then Spyglass. That's cool. I already have one of those in play. It's going to be kind of difficult for my opponent to stop the Stone Coral Serpent. I just kind of have to stay alive. So I'm getting rid of these things because they could they could all be two ones because of this castle. All right, so they have Thrill Possibilities. So I can make one more. And ditch that. So that's 7, 8, 9, 10. Looking at like... 11. Looking at like 11 damage. Depending on what, they, what else they draw, if they play more things. I'm going to be sacking this golden egg to, to gain three life, obviously. <clears throat> it's going to be tough for them to stop the serpent. No, I think I need to fire off that legion, because otherwise I, I could definitely be taking 17 if I didn't. I think. Yeah, that's that was our our Demir mirror. That was a magic mirror deck. We just got to, we just played that a little bit ago. We lost both of our matches, but we played against like the two best decks in the format, and you know it was was no shame in losing the matches. If you want to check it out, check it out over there on YouTube. Yeah, this thing has trample. It's gonna be tough. Like, if they had another two two fairies here, it'd be pretty scary. I guess castle would have been, so that would have been six. So that would have been 14 damage by activating castle. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess I vote, I vote the Kaya to kill them also. Right now, I mean, I I only have two mana available right now. I couldn't cast out the Kaya last turn with casting Legion's End. I think, yeah, I don't think Lavinia is a good sideboard answer to. Um, Fires of Invention.
they were tapped out, I could attack also and kill them. Both the guys a little faster. However, I think that if your deck can just utilize Lavinia in the main deck, you know, be like kind of an aggressive blue-white deck um, with, uh, you know, like maybe like a hero, you know, Esper hero, Jeskai hero, something like that. Um, and you can just kind of utilize Lavinia. I think it can be an okay card. Um, you know, it can stop Guild Goose into turn two, into Oko on turn two if you play your Lavinia on t turn two. I guess, but but yeah, I don't think Lavinia is strong enough on its own to to play as like a cyborg card. You'd just rather have any kind of counter spell or enchantment removal spell instead. So I guess our our. Our hand needs a lot more lands, and we don't really have ways to find lands until we get to four. When we ever have when we have Mystic Forge in play, we can you know exile non lands to help us hit more land drops. Um, so hopefully we draw lands. Draw lands. We have to charge up the sleeves to get lands. No. All right, maybe this wasn't a good keep. Maybe this was a great keep. <laughs> we just draw that same draw step for the next three, please. Take three more of those. Is this Simic Flash? Or is it Golos with Growth Spiral? Looks like Flash to me. We are pretty obviously not a good deck against Flash with having all sorts of expensive sorcery speed cards. This is not good against Flash. That's just something we know about our deck. This is just a, a weakness in our deck of being weak to Simic Flash. It's just how it is. We got to play around Quench there. Draw on that land. Draw some more lands. Their opponent may have a very creature heavy hand. So it looks like. Land. Yay. Temple's a good one too. Scry. Yay, another land. Another green source. That's pretty good. Not a bad turn for me. Especially if they don't have a creature. Ah, never mind. It was a bad turn.
This glass casket, not looking good against these brazen borrowers. That's right, 12 hour stream tomorrow. Starting. Uh, hmm. Starting at noon. Eastern time going to midnight. So yeah, the 12 hours I always do 12 to 12 for the 12 hour streams. Um Karn doesn't even matter. <laughs> yep, after this league, I'll begin some sleep. I will defend my ally. My grief fuels my mission. Um, no, I, I don't. I don't, Frank. Because I, I stream here every single day. And so, no, I don't play paper as well. It's my daily job. It took my opponent a really long time to figure that one out. It's just a matchup that we're not winning. I mean, Glass Casket looked really bad. I don't think I take it out, though. It's not always going to look that bad. Um, no to both of those questions. No, I don't, I don't collect cards. Uh, I still have, I still have like my collection that I had before and everything, but, um, no, I haven't purchased new cards in a long time. How many games on average would you give a deck before judging it competitive or not? Um, I don't think there's any like specific number of games that's something that I've just been playing long enough that I can kind of tell if it, if a deck's competitive really from just the first time playing it, honestly. Um, you know, they could definitely tell like if it's, you know, if it's, if it's off, you know, like if it, if it needs some updates and all that kind of stuff, but I don't think there's a specific number of games that you need to play with a deck before you can, uh, or like to, to show that it's competitive or not. Um, if if you you know if you can't really tell that it's just basically um, you know like whenever you are I guess a good a good barometer there is if you can, uh, you know, queue in with the deck, you know, like, you know, play a match, and you're like, before the, you know, going in before the match, you're like, you're pretty confident 
that you're going to win kind of thing. That's showing that the deck's competitive. Um, you know, if you're fairly confident that, that you're going to be winning whenever you play the deck. No, Cracker, I'm not at all. No, I'm just trying to make really good content for, for y'all here on Twitch and for y'all on YouTube. Um, that's that's my goal. I'm not trying to become part of the MPL. I'm not trying to do any kind of qualifying or anything. Azazel! Thank you so much. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. Thanks for the support. So I'm number 22 on the day. All right, so yeah, so our opponent missed a land drop. <clears throat> Certainly good for us. I don't know if I'm supposed to be playing Mystic Forge. I, I'm like, I don't want Mystic Forge countered. It's my only card. Thanks, Azazel. Uh, Cracker, again, yeah, just the making content. Um, all right, yeah, Jeter, I'll, I'll take a look at that question here in just a second. Um, do I, you know, like this getting frilled mystic would be really annoying, but if I if I don't play Mystic Forge, then they get to Night Pack Ambusher. It's just the the difficult the difficulty of playing against frilled mystic and Night Pack Ambusher. You know, maybe I guess maybe if I just jam Mystic Forge the the previous turn, maybe they don't have the counter spell for it. Okay, do you think with the food decks coming into popularity that any mid range control type deck needs cards that exile or destroy artifacts? No, um, no, not really, because destroying food tokens isn't isn't really helping you win those matches that's not really what um that's not really what the games are about it's about the other cards that are doing so much you don't need like if i'm playing like a, a simic food deck um i would love for you to play some kind of food destruction spell like that's not what the games are really about so Yeah, real good chance I should have just slammed the the Mystic Forge when they were they just had the three mana.
I wish I could instant speed these guys, rats. I, mean, I guess we could play. I guess we could play Teferi in this deck. Bleh. Like in the sideboard or something. Mostly doing this to be able to see their hand. Really? I have like hardly any things that actually target. Ugh. I'd preferably. Again, preferably I'd like to Kaya's Wrath before getting more zombies. I need to be able to play, you know, I need to be able to have Kai's Wrath resolve, of course. I need to be able to play something else with Wrath. That's pretty good. So we'll see if Yeah, you can play the you can play the brawl cards in standard. See if they have two counter spells. If they do, I'm I am dead. Hmm. Yeah, let's just keep them here. Here's the moment of truth. Do they have another counter? Yep. I mean, so I can I can go to 13 
and get a third blocker. But that's still lethal. Like you know, so I can get another blocker here and go to thirteen, but that's still lethal. All right, so our deck very weak to Simic Flash. This is just like if you're playing Simic Flash, this is just like the exact deck that you want to play against. Unfortunately. And we couldn't catch a break with them not having loaded hands, unfortunately. But besides that, I'd say a very good showing there for Esper Alayla. Um, you know, we lost a disappointing one to the dredge deck that milled us out. I, I would like to, like, I think that we're pretty favored in that matchup because of how good we are against uh, Arclight Phoenix. Um, Alayla really showed up strong against Arclight Phoenix. And then, of course, we have our sideboard, Ashiox and Unmoored Egos. Really, the only way we're going to lose that is to, to drown Secrets milling us out. And unfortunately, they, they got to do that in games one and three. That's really the only scary card in their deck. Um, and then, yeah, we lost to Simic Flash. Like, Simic Flash is going to be really tough. But that was kind of a weird league. You know, we played against the Dredge twice. We went 1-1. Um, like I said, I thought we were unfortunate with our loss, but we went 1-1 there. And then we played against Is It Alliance twice and won both of those. So kind of a weird league. Um, but, yeah, so about our cards, um, Alayla looked good. You know, like making a bunch of two one flyers was was certainly good. We didn't get to really use like the the whole like death touch um, part. You know, like how Alayla can trade with a really big creature with having death touch. Um, but that was that was pretty nice making a bunch of two ones for sure. And you know, like the life link was nice. I liked Alayla. That was a good good card. And I think this was a good shell because we have the ability to cast a bunch of artifacts. Um, Karn also. Definitely looked good. Definitely looked like a card that I should have in the other version of this deck without a Layla. Karn was good. Um, you know, being able, you know, playing Esper means we get Kaya's Wrath, which is nice. Kind of the problem with the Layla, I kind of wish a Layla cost three because you know we have all these other cards at four that we want to have, which this didn't cost four as well. I have to say that the card that I was the most disappointed with was Glass Casket, though. Like Glass Casket. We just didn't play against any decks, you know, like playing against uh, Dredge, Dredge, and then Is It, Is It. Like these glass caskets were just pretty bad, unfortunately. I kind of wish Alayla also made artifacts. I, I took out Steel Overseer, you know, for the, for the glass caskets here. But, you know, Steel Overseer doesn't, um, you know, you can't pump the fairy t tokens. I wish they were Thopters, you know, it creates a 1-1 blue thopter creature token with flying like that would be nice if it made thopters and then your steel overseer could pump up the thopters like that would be really good uh but there we go that's esper uh layla so yeah sideboard i mean yeah i mean we, we could have more stuff against like simic flash i mean like, for Karn, we want, like, these different artifacts for Karn. So, you know, like, we're looking at, you know, having just a, a few slots that, that aren't artifacts. Um, yeah, there's there's obviously Esper Colors. You have, you know, 20, 30 different good options. You know, like, there's there's tons of good Esper cards I didn't include. You know, whether you're you're looking at Counter Magic, Discard, um, really, uh, really good removal with like Noxious Grasp and Dispark and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, obviously, like es Esper has it, just tons of sideboard options. You know, of course, Teferi as well. So the the sideboard could there. There's no way the sideboard is perfect for sure because of all the the different really good options that uh, Esper has access to. But anyway, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. Also, uh, leave comments. Let me know what you think about Alayla, Artful, Provocateur. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're playing a different Alayla deck, let me know over there. Also, it's Tuesday Brews Day. So let me know what cards you want me to uh, build around for next Tuesday. What rares and mythics uh, do you want me to build around? I think I was going to maybe do Parhelion 2. Um... Mayo's going to do Parhelion 2 for next time. Uh, but yeah, any you know other rares and mythics that you know don't see standard play that you want to see play 
uh, let me know over there. Uh, besides that, check out the Patreon page. Again, patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. Again, there's a link down below in the YouTube description over there. If you'd like to help support my content for $3 a month, I'll be uh, making a lot of written content and cyborg guides and stuff like that for, for Patreon. So go join the community over there. But that's it here for Espero Layla. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.